El 13 de mayo de 1939, un barco con 937 pasajeros salió de Alemania buscando refugio en alguna parte del mundo. La gran mayoría a bordo eran judíos y su intención era llegar a América y poder así escapar lo suficientemente lejos de las garras del nazismo. Algunos pasajeros tenían previa autorización para desembarcar en Cuba, ya que el director general de la Oficina de Migración de Cuba había vendido de manera ilegal certificados de desembarco. El acto de corrupción desató el enojo en la población cubana, que se negaba a recibir inmigrantes, pues estos competirían por los pocos trabajos disponibles que existían. Tras el escándalo, de los 937 pasajeros, solo pudieron desembarcar 28. El escenario era trágico. Si aquellos pasajeros regresaban a Alemania, terminarían siendo asesinados por el régimen nazi. Así que desde el mar pidieron auxilio a otros países de América. Wow. As you can imagine, that was a terrible mood. Everybody was very depressed. Few people committed, tried to commit suicide. As I think uh, the one man, he, I think he cut his wrists and they, he was the only one who landed because they had to take him to the hospital to, to tend to him. I don't know whether he stayed or not. I think he did. He must have been the only one who stayed. But, you know, humans are always hopeful. You know, we always cling to the hope something is going to happen. They're not going to let us rot on the ocean. I mean, something had to happen to us. Of course, the fear was that we would go back to Germany. That was a big thing, you know. So we... The food got worse and worse, and the water was water supply. I mean, we had water, but uh, we had to be careful. And of course, the parties were over. No more parties. No more, no more fun. We were just sitting and waiting, what gonna happen? You know. And uh, here again, the committee uh, tried everything and sent telegrams all over the world trying to get us in but it was every day they had <clears throat> like newsletters printed and put out on board to tell us what's happening and every day there was another country we were supposedly going to go but we never and, and nothing came about till finally at the, we were already to to the coast of Miami And we thought we can, you know, I heard later that <coughs> the captain had agreed that we make some kind of a forced landing or something, but we uh, didn't know anything about it. We just saw the uh, Coast Guard boats surround us near Miami to make sure that we wouldn't even come close to the boat, to the to shore, so that was out. So we saw the lights of Miami, we saw the lights of America, and that was it. So we slowly sailed back to Europe, and of course behind the, you know, there was a lot of negotiations going on with the United, with the United Jewish Appeal, and there was a Miss, uh, uh, Mr. Topper in Paris, and he finally got it together that we will be divided between Belgium and Holland and France and England. Un mes después de desesperadas peticiones, el barco regresó a Europa y los pasajeros fueron repartidos entre Gran Bretaña, Holanda, Bélgica y Francia. El lugar de llegada determinó para cada pasajero su pase a la vida o a la muerte. De los 937 pasajeros de aquel barco memorable llamado San Luis, solo sobrevivieron 278. El resto murieron víctimas del nazismo. <risa> 